Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. You know, it used to be in the old days, we would just take someone like you in an alley and blow their brains out. This is episode 185, recorded March 15th, 2023. Some magazine. Hello once again, I'm your host Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic, or not so classic, film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. Tonight, we are looking at Death Race 2000. Murder, mayhem, fast cars, and... Other well, things. Stick yeah. around and you'll find out. All right, let me introduce my crew, starting off with the one and only Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, sir? Jeff Moore is keeping us in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> are you frozen? I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. You guys are all frozen, blinking in oh. and out. So oh. I just this just makes this more important. Beware the Ides of March. There you go. There you go. All right. Also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy. Hey, hey, let me ask you, when will this uh, be available? When will this one be showing? Two weeks. Two weeks? Okay. So if you are in uh, Roanoke, Virginia uh, in April 21st or so, come to RavenCon where I will be a guest. And I believe that will also be the launch party for my book. Yeah. Yeah. What is your book's title, sir? It is titled Rom, A-R-A-U-M. That's the name of the demon. And it's about demons and lawyers and all kinds of and malevolent And people creatures. be able to order this book somewhere? Not yet. I haven't yet gotten anything on, on where to order it. Um, okay. But I'm hoping soon, yeah. And I'll have that tattooed on my face. Ah, there you Jeez, go. So. Is it is it uh is it non fiction or is it non fiction? It's about demons and lawyers. So actually, I guess it could be non fiction. Right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a historical like, piece. In this case, <laughs> fiction. As far okay. as I know. All right. I didn't know if you were doing like a it was like demons and lawyers in movies. I didn't know what you were doing. All right, moving on. Also joining us tonight is Chad Hunt. Comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the Classic Era. How you doing, Jared? I am particularly awesome today. I've, I've heard. Don't that. ask me why. Don't I'm ask just me saying. why. I'm just <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I am so happy you are. All right, we are here to discuss Death Race 2000. Oh me, this movie from Paul Bartel, and and I guess it's a uh, New World Pictures at the time, right? This is mm -hmm. a, it is. Uh, this is a Roger Corman production. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, and a lot of familiar faces, a lot of cast members that we can't wait to tell you about. Uh, but what we do when we start off here is we talk about when we first saw it and what our first impression was. Uh, this came at uh, well, we'll look at all the details here, but you know, 1975 is when this this beastie came out but let's take a look at the card and get the details we actually have two this is gonna be fun death rate 2000 directed by paul bartell what a guy written by robert uh, tom uh charles b griffith uh and based on a story by ib melchior we're gonna go with that the cast includes david carradine simone griffith sylvester stallone louisa yep. moritz moritz sorry Mary Waranoff, Roberta Collins, Fred Crandy, Martin Cove, and Joyce Jameson, along with others. Production company is New World Pictures. Filming location was in California. The release date was April 30th, 1975 in L.A. and then June 6th in New York City. The budget was somewhere between $300,000 and $530,000, but the box office is uh, around five to eight million, 15 million if you look at the ultimate movie rankings, I guess. I don't know why there's such a discrepancy, but we'll go with it. The synopsis is in a dystopian future, a cross country automobile race requires contestants to run down innocent pedestrians to gain points that are tallied based on each kill's brutality. Oh, we lost somebody. I'm not sure who. Oh, it looks like Jeff. Um, one thing that, uh, you know, the, the cannonball, right? There's, there's a guy named cannonball 
that um, you know the Cannonball Run is probably what you've heard of, and this is kind of a take on that. But mm -hmm. what's interesting, I, I bring that up now because the follow-up movie to this, also with uh, Carradine and directed by uh, Paul Bartel, was Cannonball. Cannonball. <laughs> no yeah. run, just Cannonball, and was very much uh, that. Yeah. Uh, but this is uh, much more sci-fi, much more brutal. Think, um, uh, what 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 is it the the race car game now where you run around and do that too um grand theft auto well not that one but yeah you get the idea i don't know games <laughs> that well so i'm gonna shut up um but let's get into this and uh find out what we uh when we originally saw this film and what we thought of it uh chad why don't you start us off sir ah okay um I saw this at a drive-in in Eden, North Carolina. I think it was oh. Eden. Um, that would have been around the time that I would have saw it was there. But, um, yeah, I, and I remember all the kids were seeing it at school and were talking about Frankenstein, Frankenstein, Frankenstein. So I thought this movie had Frankenstein in it. Uh, when I saw it, so I was imagine my dismay when I saw it was only David Carradine. <laughs> but um, yeah, this was uh, I had a blast watching this, and and the gore it was the most orange blood you could come up with, even yeah. more so than Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. But uh, you had car wheels ripping out on guys' crotches and and uh, just brutal murder with cars just it was just, uh, yeah everything it was just very cool and very funny too i found it very very humorous very very funny so uh stallone in there you know mary warren off uh paul bartell and all those guys uh i've always been a fan of them uh so it was it's always been cool to see them uh in this movie you know so and, and still good i think it still holds up a little bit um watching it now it's more even more of a satire now than it was when i was a kid but, <laughs> i think so yeah. i think so oh wow excellent excellent bill mulligan sir when did you first see death Race 2000 and what did you think i Does think it, it would have been the early 80s when i was in college it was either part of the midnight movies that we showed on campus or at the local repertoire theater that would always have double fe different double feature every day um, I feel like there was a, a good double feature with this, but I can't remember what they showed it with, but it was clever. Maybe it was the cars that eat people or something, but um, I think I think this was a great time to be watching Roger Corman movies because, you know, he still had that B movie uh, sensibility, but he was able to show a lot more stuff than he had before. I mean, yeah, I remember being impressed with the gore and everything. It seems so tame now, but that's just a, reflection of, of how far things have continued to move but at the time yeah that was pretty pretty gory stuff and the, the comedy was broad but good i've always loved mary warrenough and i was a big fan of john carradine too i mean i loved kung fu um i i realized now the the sheer insanity of kung fu where um david carradine who's like the whitest guy in the world walks into a bar <laughs> And everybody in the bar starts yelling at him to get out of there because they don't serve Chinese people. I'm like, huh? But okay, somehow they saw it. Uh, I didn't. Um, but he's he's fun, and I think he really is great in this role. He's physically perfect, and it. it's a great costume. I don't know why everybody doesn't cosplay as uh, as Frankenstein. Oh, it's because you got to be thin as a rail. Yes, you, you do. Oh my God. You're going to look like the Tron guy. But this is a fun movie, and I do think it holds up well. Yeah, it's 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 low budget. I mean, it is as low budget as you can get. And you, you think, boy, if they had just a little bit more, the, what they could have done, because you know. The, but you know, there there has been a a a remake which had probably eleven times the budget of this, probably way more than that. Jason and Jason. it, it kind of came and went, didn't really leave mm -hmm. a mark. This one is still thought of fondly today and you can see why watching it absolutely absolutely jeff marser when did you first see this and what was your first impression um well uh this was my pick and sorry i was uh rebooting because my computer seemed to like not like me um but i saw this in the theater and i went to it because hey kung fu david carradine and yep. uh, I loved it. 
and the whole idea of getting points for hitting people, I just thought this is awesome because we used to talk about that, you know, not in driver's training, but after driver's training, you know. <laughs> ah, <laughs> hey, yeah. How many points? How many points? Uh, but anyway, I loved it. I think the cars are kind of the end, but sort of cool. And although I was, was extremely limited, that uh, machine gun Joe DeHerbo never fired his machine guns that were mounted on his car, at least that I mm, noticed. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so there were some tools that didn't get used, and it was, I don't know, the cast. At the time, I don't think I knew, didn't really know what I was getting for the cast, you know, but but now looking back, it's, a, it's really kind of an incredible cast. So uh, anyway, I loved it then. I liked it. It's actually better than I thought it was going to seem now. Um, yeah. My memory was that there was a lot more uh, overcranked uh, car speedings, but it wasn't up near as bad as I, I remembered. Maybe it looked worse on a big screen. I don't know. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I've seen a lot worse. I've seen a lot worse. Yeah, this is a, what uh, two or three years before Rocky. So uh, this came. He came right off mm -hmm. of Lords of Flatbush. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. just Sylvester Stallone. Uh, I th okay. Funny story. I would have told you before watching this movie again this past weekend that I had seen this movie. I must be confusing it with like some other movie, perhaps Cannonball, uh, which is the next film from Paul Bartel and David Carradine, but. I um, I knew about it. I knew Frankenstein. I knew all the characters and everything. Um, I knew Sylvester Stallone was in it, but I would not have guessed that Sylvester Stallone is in this movie as much as he is. I was delighted to see how big a role he actually had. And he's he's actually funny in this. He's he's hilarious. Um, so it turns out the first time I watched it, it was this past weekend, and I I think it holds up wonderfully well. I mean, yes, it looks dated. Uh, but I think tonally and the message holds up and the acting is, is, is wonderful. It's cheesy. It's, um, there's, I imagine there's tongues stuck in cheeks, right? Everybody's kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> playing it, but not, I mean, they're playing it straight, but you know, with a little bit of, uh, uh, winks, yeah. <laughs> if you will, uh, they're having a, a fun time with it. Um, and yeah, there's there's cameos here and there. There's people in in in, in roles that you wouldn't expect, and uh, and a lot, of, a lot of a lot of fake ass gore, which is hilarious. A lot of crashes, which is what you want to see, and more nudity than I expected. Um, a lot of a lot of nudity, even even bare Sylvester Sloan, but go yeah. figure. There was I didn't even notice. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're too busy, too looking, busy at looking at Mary Warren. Mary Warren. <laughs> yeah. right there with um, but I, you know, I had a blast, and this what a what a fun film. And you know, it it okay. So we're stretching our, our our definition of horror, but I mean, they do murderize people and kill. But yeah, this is this is an action film, but uh, or comedy. But it's 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 a classic. And David Carradine as Frankenstein is wonderful. Just the the. I don't know. It's it's so he's so sly and under you know he's underperforming the role for the dialogue, right? He's reserved, yeah. And it makes it makes it even better somehow. It makes the whole yeah, character yeah. better. Just how he's you know low key and delivery and yeah, the way he walks. Strong, silent type. It, yeah. it works so much better than if he would just gone all Nicolas Cage on us. <laughs> or or Jason Statham who was into. The yeah. remake and the two thousand, uh, but it. I thought he did a great job. Of course, he's like you said, Jeffy is just coming off of uh, Kung Fu. Uh, matter of fact, if I read the credit, the the notes right, he, it was like two weeks after he left the set. Yeah. He was like, yeah. he's like, I got to do something else, or I'm going to be Kung Fu forever. And um, yeah, and this this movie was responsible for jump starting his career uh, in the movies, and uh, we're all better for it. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And these posters. Nice poster, by the way. Yes. That's a that's a nice, it just kind of reminds me of like danger diabolique, you know, that just mm. kind of smooth, cool. That 70s style. style. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Montage yeah. poster. Nice, yeah. nice painted poster. And 
Uh, and they got, uh, you know, this is the a, a banner-ish poster. And, of course, the regular poster size has David Carradine, you know. And what is it? Um, no longer a felony. It's a national sport. Girl. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and a cross-country road wreck. Wow. Whatever. <laughs> uh, there you go. There it is. This one Weird. looks like a 12-year-old, some crayons. And uh, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I like that it says in the year 2000. Well, the red part does, yeah. 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 In the year 2000, yes. In that... the year 2000. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> now, what is, oh, this is Paul Bartel. So Paul, Paul Bartel, Bartel, who actually did more, you know, you know I, I, when I was looking into it, I forgot that he did this bizarro movie, Private Parts, which... I've only seen bits and pieces of, but really, really weird. And of course, eating Raul with Mary Warnoff. Seemed to be in Mary War with be with Mary Warnoff a lot. He was with her in Chopping Mall. So I guess they must have been best friends or something. Mm -hmm. And she was also in Rock and Roll High School, one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he just would pop up in lots of little things and just was was a was a fun guy and, and very talented. Um, left us too soon. He's got just a little bit part in this one, but yeah, well, he's directing it, so you know he's got figure. Yeah, he's the scientist at the beginning and brings Frank and ushers yeah. Frankenstein in, and really yeah. good role. But yeah, so I, I mean, you know, he was in Piranha. You know, we probably remember him as the the what he was he the owner of the no that was um, I'm trying to remember his role. He was kind of like the. In Piranha, he he's kind of the. I don't remember what over he was top doing. of the uh, all the kids, right? Oh, the oh, he camp was, counselor. Camp, camp counselor, director. yeah, yeah, camp, right, yeah, right, camp right. Director. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, now I'd heard that in this movie, he and Corman would sometimes butt heads that he was really ramping up the satire and the comedy. But then I read in the notes that that Corman himself had the script rewritten because originally it was much darker and more serious. Um, so. Maybe maybe he maybe the comedy was more comedic than he intended. I don't know. You hear a lot of stories with Corman where he kind of let people do stuff on their own, but then when they were done, he'd be like, mm, "I don't like it," and make some changes and things. But uh, I think this yeah. is exactly the right tone to take. It would not have worked as as a totally dark comedy. And I I remember people being outraged by this film. The, it, the premise. It, it, yeah, there was a lot of controversy about it. Even the UK yeah. was really bad. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. UK. And, and I, I th as I recall, I think they actually were of the opinion that this might encourage people to actually run folks over, which, you know. Could have. I guess. I mean, you know, <laughs> it seems like at every point in our history, there have been people who really thought that if we let Popeye hit Bluto over the head with a frying pan, that kids would actually do that, thinking that your sister's head would flatten out and then pop back a second later. And I don't think that ever really happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it still didn't matter. All, all the cartoons changed. I remember uh, the Fantastic Four cartoon where they took the Human Torch out and replaced him with Herbie the robot. Herbie, oh my god! Yeah. Because they were Is afraid they... kids would set themselves on fire. And I don't. Want to I, I would say if you're dumb enough to set yourself on fire, so be it. No, you know? wow, just natural selection on there. Yeah, natural just, selection. <laughs> just keep no, going. harsh but fair. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh man. So, in the seventies, there was a, a a large string of racing movies, right? Um, yeah. Matter of fact, some of the more famous ones would come later with Cannonball Run and and uh, uh, Smoking the Bandit. But even before that, we had a whole bunch. Uh, what's interesting is is that. Um, Paul Bartel directed two with David Carradine, but he was starred in the other two that uh, Corman put out, and those both had Ron Howard in it, coming off of Oh yeah, Happy Days, uh, Eat My Dust, and Grand Theft Auto. I don't know if anybody remembers. I remember Eat My Dust. I remember the yeah. commercial. Ron Howard yeah. pops the clutch and tells the world <laughs> to eat my dust. I still remember the TV spot. For oh my God! That's right, that's right. Corman Corman was always making these. I mean, even in the 50s or 60s he made a number of hot rod movies um so cars have always been been a thing that mo none of those movies have really stood the test of time the way the horror and, and the you know the Poe stuff has but yeah i mean cars have always been a, a big big part of american uh drive-in grindhouse cinema 
It's just only a few of them. This one, I think, is the one that people remember because it also has the science fiction element to go with it. I always remember uh, Bill mentioned it earlier, Cars That Eat People, but I think it was called Cars That Ate Paris when I saw it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cars you know, you're right. you're right. And uh, it remi this movie reminded me of, of that. I don't know which came first. This one or Cars That Eat People, but but that was a that was a pretty uh from what i remember the blade sticking out of all the cars oh yeah there was like yeah. and, and crazy and stuff yeah i remember going to see the road warrior and if i remember right i was thinking at the time i hope this is not just going to be one of these car chase movies because a little goes a long way well needless to say it was not uh you know that kind of movie absolutely blew me away and I've never, I've never been as big a fan of the car stuff as you know, even the Fast and Furious ones and everything. But there's, but again, there's a place in Amer American uh, film for uh, for the for that genre of film. But this is the one I really like because again, the science fiction, the horror overtones, the satire, it just it's it's dated and yet, like what Chad was saying, no, it actually kind of makes as much sense today as it did yeah, then. Maybe more, in maybe some more ways, than more than so. Which is funny is because now it now the race is in the past, not in the future. <laughs> it's one of those movies where they they put the date so far ahead, like nobody will ever, you know, yeah. but we all make it. So uh David Carradine, I want to mention David Carradine and Ron Howard real quick again by um before we move on, that David Carradine was paid ten percent of the film's gross. Oh. Right? Which is unusual for Roger Corman. He only oh, yeah. did that. He only did that twice with two actors, and that was David Carradine and Ron Howard. So um, these four he figured movies, they were worth it. But I'll bet yeah. he was. I'll bet he went to bed angry for years on that. And he game. gave up ten percent. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, look, Roger Corman's a great guy, and amazingly, he's still alive, um, still with us. He's, all, he's almost a hundred, isn't he? I know, I know, yeah. man. And the last interview I saw with him, he still has his wits about him, which is just marvelous. But everyone, even the people who loved him, would tell you he would squeeze a quarter until the eagle screamed. I mean, he, he this guy, this guy did not give off percentages, not just percent percentage of the gross. Do you know how rare that is? Yeah. You, get, you get percentage of the net, and then they make sure there's no net ever, ever, no matter what. Yeah. My movies, Harry Potter, no, never made a dime. But to get a percentage of the gross, it's hard to hide the gross. Mm -hmm. yeah. Congratulations, um, David Carradine. Yes, yes. He, he, he did he did a good job of negotiating that and and Ron Howard too I guess um where were they gonna go next uh do I guess we have the writer and he's one of my favorites Charles B yeah. Griffith yeah because Tell us about he, him. look at these movies this he was he was the guy that you really I, I associate the most with Roger Corman's greatest period of of making movies in the 60s and 50s and everything because but you know it conquered the world i mean these are iconic little shop of horrors which is probably the one that he'll be known most for but not by me by me he's the guy who wrote not of this earth and attack of the crab monsters <laughs> two of my all-time favorite movies um just great stuff i i didn't realize he'd written uh, she beast which was the first one um, that michael reeves did the guy who directed which master general this guy just had a really cool he could he could hack them out and and i don't know there's just something about them and i've read a number of interviews with him he was not entirely happy with his place and everything i think he always felt he didn't get enough credit and you sort of understand that i mean everyone talks about roger corman movies and and they don't give my they just sort of assume if it's a roger corman movie roger did everything you know wrote it directed it acted in it shot it with a camera and that's not true so uh, I, I think, yeah, Griffith did feel he, he tried directing some things himself. And as a director, he was a very good writer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're not his best films. But yeah, I, I, I really I really like his stuff. And um, sorry, he's not with us. He died, I think, uh, quite a while ago, I think around 2000 or so. And if he just lasted a little bit longer. I think he would have finally gotten. The attention, the credit, that the recognition, you know, yeah. yeah, making my childhood much happier. <laughs> so yeah, you, you've got to love Attack of the Crab Monsters. It's the best. It's the best <laughs> worst movie you've ever seen in your oh, life. Oh, nice, nice. But it, but it, you know, and, and that's something that he does a lot is that Attack of the Crab Monsters. Roger Corman would have been perfectly happy if he just, you know, 
sent in a script that had a bunch of attacking crab monsters. It, they didn't have to be crab monsters that were made out of mercury and ate your head and then could telepathically communicate with mm -hmm. people. And we're like, where did this come from? But it's that sort of, you know, taking it to the next level, doing, you know, making the films crazier than they really needed to be. Whatever that the plot uh, wanted to. <laughs> yeah. yeah just, just go with it. I like Bucket of Blood. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, of course, the movie was co-written by Robert Tom, and he did <laughs> Bloody Mama in 70 and Crazy Mama in 75. He liked his mama movies. He liked the mama movies, yeah. <laughs> he also did The Witch Who Came From the Sea. That's a bizarre little film. That is a... I, we're going to have to do that at some point because that is a strange little... A lot of, a lot of interesting characters in that one. Mm. And, of course, we've been talking about uh, David Carradine, and this this is a great role for him, and they awesome. really play it up uh, with the the mask and the outfit and everything, and they keep talking about I, I lost my jaw in seven in ninety five and my eyeball and, I, and the right arm in this one and that it's like <laughs> holy cow, uh, but then of course spoilers when they take the mask off he's perfectly fine yeah he's just, he just looks like David Carradine yeah well the best the best. One of the best puns ever was the hand grenade. That, just, oh my god! That was, <laughs> my wife laughed out loud. She'd been just sort of, you know, putting up with this better than some of the ones you guys make me watch with her. But um, when they did the hand grenade, she was like, "Okay, that's that's." Actually really fun. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and now he's worried about is how am I going to shake the president's hand? <laughs> yeah, he did something weird with his mouth too when he had the mask on. Like, yeah, see how that, his, mm. like that. He's yeah. kind of holding his mouth like that. He, well, his yeah. jaw was supposed to have been like oh, that's lost right, his yeah, jaw or something. I don't know if that's where he was trying to go. Okay. I didn't realize. I mean, two hundred and thirty-nine credits. He Who made security. Yeah, holy cow! That is a lot of credits. I mean. You know, and it, toward the end, especially, or, you know, yeah, toward the end, it, it was one of those things where he was in a lot of stuff and a lot of it was garbage. But, you know, he had, he still had the, the name credit and, you know, recognition that people would fly him out and he would have small roles in low budget movies and they paid him. And he probably only had to do that once or twice a month and, you know, a weekend here and a weekend there and you're still making a pretty good sum. And, but he went out strong because the, when Quentin Tarantino, who I'm sure watched every, um, you know, watched this film on repeat over and oh, over I again. Oh, I bet. He watched yeah. every video yeah. score. <laughs> when it was time to do Kill Bill, oh, there was only one choice. Yeah. And uh, he was brilliant in that. I loved mm -hmm. Kill Bill. You know, my favorite, two of my favorite movies. I can't count them as one, but. And, yeah. and you know, Carradine, Carradine uh, was always, he played, he he could play a certain role better than anyone. You know, he uh, he really didn't know that much Kung Fu, which was pretty obvious watching the show. Whenever he had to do Kung Fu, they just slow it down. But I loved him in that. And, and I still love him, even though I, I later found out that was supposed to be Bruce Lee. That was originally going to be a, a project for Bruce Lee. And you're like, uh, what would that have been like? Uh, and they decided I mean, they didn't want to put... Uh, yeah, they didn't think uh, they didn't think America was ready to watch a movie about a Chinese guy played by an actual Chinese guy. Mm. So yeah, kind of. There's the seventies for you. Well, yeah. and right after this, he then he did. Somebody mentioned Cannibal, but Bound for Glory was really a very good. That's right. Well received, well reviewed movie. Did he get? Um, did he get a nomination for that? Because he was really good in it. It looks like one of those films that should have gotten a, an acting nomination. Mm. I I don't know. Did you guys watch Young Riders? The Long Riders, excuse me, The Long Riders? Oh, yeah, The Long Riders, yes. yeah. Of course, he plays one of the younger brothers. All the, mm -hmm. all the Carradines play the younger brothers. I love That film is so cool because it has all the, yeah. the family brothers actors in actually it. Playing yeah, brothers, yeah. yeah. Well, did you ever see Tom Horn? It was, it was a two-part uh, Western where Tom Horn... A bounty hunter or assassin, depending on who you talk to, you know, that they would, mm -hmm. the, the, the cattle, sheep, wars, somebody would hire him to come in. But there was a movie that came out almost the same time. There was a theatrical movie that starred Steve McQueen. Yeah. It was on, on the same character. 
and I forget what the title was slightly different. Um, well, this one was Mr. Horn. I'm sorry. He played Mr. Horn, and I think Steve McQueen was Tom Horn, I think. But same character. All right. Now, I think one of the surprises with this movie is going to be Sylvester Stallone, who, uh, like I said earlier, I, I thought he would just had a, like a cameo, like one of the razors that would crash at the beginning, right? Like Harrison Ford in American Graffiti, right? He shows up, sticks his head out the window, and that's all you see. No, he's in the whole damn movie, and he's yeah. like the antagonist, really, right? Mm -hmm. He probably um, has more lines than anybody else in the movie. He, well, he, yeah. definitely, yeah. he definitely has more lines than Carradine, who's pretty quiet, but he he is wonderful i was so i had such a good time watching him in this movie oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's having fun and and it's like he's you, you, the funny thing is you feel like he's doing a stallone impersonation yeah. but he wasn't famous enough to be doing an impersonation that's just him i wow. love the i love the poster because after you know shortly after this came out it wasn't too long before stallone was a huge star right and they brought this movie back and just sort of pumped him up in the poster and there's John Carradine sort of crouched in the corner like I'm in this movie too mm -hmm. <laughs> he's always angry he's angry at everything he's always yelling at everything but he's the most impotent guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all he's like yelling at nothing he's like stop playing that music I told you to stop playing that music you know and he's he's <laughs> mean to his girl, his navigator. Yeah, there, and he's, you he's know. a jerk to the girl. That was, and that was the one part about this I, di I didn't really like is that this movie kills off a lot of characters I like. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Stallone. We knew he wasn't gonna be long for this world. I mean, he's a jerk. Jerks get what they deserve. But she was, she was sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, used to see her on a lot of Love American style a lot. Um, I can yes, remember, well, I can't yeah. remember her name right now. Moretz. I think it was yeah, Louisa, Louisa Moritz. Uh, Moritz. Moritz, yeah. I always got her confused with um, the woman who was with Johnny Carson, who did the. Um, I can't. Oh, Carol Wayne. Yes, Carol Wayne. Yeah. Oh, Wayne. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, well, they both they be... both specialized in ditzy blonde roles. Well, yeah, and she reminds you a little bit of <laughs> Judy Holiday too, uh, mm. from the fifties. <laughs> yeah this this was uh, this was a full year before Rocky came out in seventy six. Um, I mean, you got to make your money until you got to make, you know, you got to make it till you break it. Right. Mm -hmm. and he, yeah. he certainly after Rocky, he didn't need to do this anymore. No, I mean, um, Stallone's not my favorite actor, but I do you have you got to give him credit for guts. I mean, he wrote the script mm -hmm. for Rocky and they were willing to buy it from him and give him more money than he had ever seen in his life to go make this movie. And he's like, well, I, I have to play Rocky. And they're like, yeah, no, no, no. We're going to give this who Who knows who they wanted to give it to? But he stuck to his guns and they were willing to do it, but they were willing to do it by paying him a whole lot less. Mm -hmm. He probably would have made more money selling the script than he did selling the script and acting in the movie. So that was a hell of a gamble. And you know what? He had faith in his ability to, to do right by the role. And that was absolutely 100 percent the best decision to make. But I'll bet not one person out of 20 would have made that choice. Yeah. So you got to give him credit for that. Yep. Yep. I remember uh, Nighthawks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and then Nighthawks got what it got put in that. What was that movie uh, about the uh, about being in the theaters that had all the horror movies and then it spent like 20 minutes on Nighthawks out of nowhere? You guys remember what movie I'm talking I, about? I, yeah, it was like a compilation. Terror in the yeah. Isles or something. Yeah, Terror in the Isles. That's it. Yeah. Terror in the Isles. Yeah. And it was like, why are you bringing this back? Because anyway. we had the rights to it. They had the, no, yeah, that's they, true. And it had Stallone, so you got to yeah. feature Stallone. That, that's right. Terry that's Niles true. movie. That movie, gosh. <laughs> uh, there's <Yay>. a <laughs> Mary Flower. Martin. Uh, and she we is love Mary. She, she's also great in this. Yes, fact, she is. Everybody's she is. having a good time in this movie, actually. She is just so stylish and and just intelligent looking. And and having spoken to her at a convention. Which she still she last I saw she still does some she's still lovely, um, still looks like Mary Warrenoff. Obviously older, mm -hmm. don't we all? But but she she still you can tell you can recognize her. You can still still tell it's her, and she's a smart person. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that always came across. You know, just the, and and just I don't know if she was trained as a model or what, but ha the camera loves her. Yeah. I always thought she should have been. A more recognized star 
you know, the, the right role should have, should have come along in a bigger production or something. But maybe she was happy doing these. I always ones. wanted her to be one of Charlie's angels. Oh, who wouldn't oh. need any others? Could have been Charlie's yeah. angel. <laughs> Harry yeah. Warren, yeah. If Corman did it, she would have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a smart call right there. Yeah. yeah. In, in some alternate reality. Uh, yeah, some, uh, yeah. Some other people we got to talk about is uh, we got to talk about Don Steele who played junior, uh, junior Bruce, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, who's, that, who's the... that Freddie ascot from Scooby-Doo. Oh my there. God. Yes. And he's basically doing a, a, a whimsical Howard Cosell kind mm. of person, but it, it, I mean, he's consistent. He's funny. Mm -hmm. and especially yeah. like when he says something and then they give him a thing and they have to change like no it was the french yeah <laughs> that was a funny bit right there the french yeah. correction it was the french <laughs> it was like a combination of howard cosell and those you know crazy wacky morning dj guys yeah always on never off just yeah yep and then uh fred grandy is uh in here as uh herman the german <laughs> I still can't un believe un that was him. Unrecognizable, but uh, yeah, Gopher from Love Boat. A Goober, Gopher, 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 Gopher. And, that, Gopher and then Steph, you else. said he he was a a congressman. He was a congressman <laughs> from Congress, Iowa. Yes, yeah. he was from uh, Council Bluffs, is where he was born. Uh, you probably wish he was still there. <laughs> I don't remember enough about when it, when he was when he was what he did and uh, at, at any rate. He's probably lucky he ran when he did because if he ran now, they'd be splashing pictures of him in a swastika car all over the no, place. No, no, you are kidding! Oh my gosh, they would have. Oh, that have been terrible. Um, but some other people like uh, Wendy Dio is one of the masseuse. and of course Ronnie Ronnie's, Dio Ronnie's wife. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh dick miller is uh uncredited in here in a brief cameo uh, i think there was a rule that every corman movie had to have yeah. dick miller in yeah. at least some role and joe dante yep. yeah yep. it's hard to tell was he well uh what did i see lewis teague was uh mm -hmm. second unit director and editor co-editor mm -hmm. john john landis was one of the mechanics yeah, it's just crazy. All kinds of and there's a lot of uh, character actors in here that you would recognize from this, that, and the other. But what we're probably really wanting to see, Chad Hunt, is the cars, right? Yeah. We want to see the cars. Look at those things. And they look, um, well, I mean, right. These, <laughs> these, look, guys, these cars were built on chassis for Volkswagens. Carmen Ghia, and one was a <laughs> one was a Corvair. Corvair, uh. but they look like cars <laughs> that you would see in 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 video games in yeah, the eighties. Yeah, they, right? they did. Um, I like the uh, Jova Turbo one. They actually used that blade out front to, mm -hmm. I guess, kind of castrate that one guy. Although you know. It's, Low graphics. <laughs> yeah, he I run, just saw an orange, orange, orange splash. You know, yeah, splash on. Oh my god! The, the funniest kill for me is when uh, they 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 park all the all the old geriatrics out in the street. Oh my god! And, yeah. and instead mm -hmm. of hitting all the geriatrics, he goes on on the sidewalk and hits he all the nurses. All the and stuff. Nurses. But but they're hidden by this wall, so all you see him is jump up in the just air, bouncing up off trampoline. That was some little rascals oh uh, BS. Right? Uh -huh. It is, yeah, but it was <laughs> it was so funny. Oh my god, it's so funny. And that's one of those save the cat moments where, you know, we instantly take a liking to uh, Frankenstein because he could have run over the old people for big bucks, but instead he went after the bastards who put them out there. Mm -hmm. Like, you go, Frankenstein. And right? the baby. Yeah. <laughs> At first I thought it was a real baby until I looked closer and it was like a doll or something that was a bomb oh, they were trying to... But holy cow, you, you know, they babies yeah, they got went... the highest points. Well, they they went there. Points. Yep. So you expect nudity and you expect explosions in the Corman film, but did it it seemed to me that all of the explosions were stationary. Like yeah. Like yeah. the car would always crash and come to a stop or, or then blow up. roll over a landmine yeah. or something, and then there'd be a great big explosion. So there wasn't any 
Uh, well, I mean, yeah. yeah. Any, and, and, I, I mean, I assume that takes uh, adds a lot more complexity to the. Oh, day, sure, but. because if it's moving, you can't have someone in there. No one's going to be in that car that's hooked up to explode because stuff happens on a low budget set, especially if you got John Landis as one of the yeah. mechanics. And uh, <laughs> Mark, too soon. Um, and Mark then, and then, car crashes all the way down the cliff. Right. Well, the other problem is in pieces and lands and then explodes. Then blows up. Yeah. If you blow up the car while it's moving, you now have a moving, blown up on fire car going who knows where. And yep. pieces Probably flying off. Straight towards the cameraman. Yep. yep. But you're right. That is kind of a cliche that in all these movies, when there's something is building up, you immediately cut to a stopped helicopter, a stopped car, a stopped whatever, and boom, it blows up. <laughs> yeah. Even when. Uh... They do the what the three point turn into the oh my god that was hilarious <laughs> no, that was a that was a five point turn was a five point yeah. turn like, might have been might have been and you're cringing because it's like Mary no no just drive away Mary Warren no, any no, other time they would have been spinning around like crazy and just yeah. not doing a three point turn but right right just driving right. over whatever was in front of them who, who no. was it got the the squashed head was that. Was that Gopher? No, that, that was, was uh, uh, that, that was, was Mary uh, Warren Jane's. Uh, yeah, Calamity Jane's. Yeah, that's right. Navigator. Oh, that's, is that the one that was like under the? Yeah, yeah, under yeah. The, that was genius. Yeah, that was genius. <laughs> I love that part. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah. Well, nobody gets my aggregator. Uh, what I can, can you say? Yeah, yeah little, I, I want to mention uh, Joyce Jameson, who played the other announcer. Uh, oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And did you hear all that? Yes. Okay, because you guys all went away. So <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what usually happens when I start talking. Uh, so she's been uh, somebody that I've always liked. She was in uh, uh, Annie Griffith show. She played one of the fun time tins, <laughs> fun time girls. Chad, remember we talked about her on. Yeah. Uh, and she was in Comedy of Terrors and Tales of Terror, two hmm. Corman films in the 60s with uh, Vincent Price and yeah. I think Karloff were in them both. Mm -hmm. and, um, but she had a, apparently, Clint Eastwood had a, an affection for her or something, or, or I don't know. But he had her, she was in Outlaw Josie Whale and in, is it Every Which Way But Loose? One of those. Hmm. One of those movies. One but I always movies. liked her and she had kind of a sad life. She wasn't, oh, really? wasn't a happy person and hmm. it ended early. Oh. Well, hmm. And there's also a young Martin Cove who yeah. you might remember yeah. from the Karate Kid. And hmm. what now? What now? Cobra Kai. Holy yeah. cow. Jeez. Still going at it, so. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. What's her name? Uh, oh, no. She was in it quite a while. Well, who was the one? Yeah, I can't remember. Cleopatra. <laughs> who was Cleopatra? That was Martin Cove's navigator. Leslie mm. McRae. She didn't last very long either. No. They were the first ones out. Okay. <laughs> Just double checking. Double I got it mixed up with, uh, with Matilda the Hun. <laughs> Matilda, Dunn. Matilda, Dunn. oh my God, Tilly dear, one of my personal friends. <laughs> Close friend I, was, mine. I know was, that was that was the uh, her 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 line when everything mm. was her friend. Uh, I okay, I just you see me smiling. I smiled through this entire movie. Sure, and I did yeah. not. I was kind of like, oh, God, we gotta watch this movie. I want to watch it again. I love it. I love it. It's great. It's a great old 70s movie. Yeah, and it, it um, has it has aged surprisingly well. And I, I again I think part of it is you look at the culture that we're in now, and the only thing they missed was they even they could not have imagined like social media and how mm -hmm. that would be perfect for something uh, like yeah. this. You could just imagine you know, the only thing that would be different is they'd all be filming selfies as they ran people over and people would be filming themselves not getting run over or sacrificing themselves, which I also thought was kind of a cool touch that oh, if, yeah. this, fans, if this were yeah. real, the fact that people are nuts enough that they would embrace it and sacrifice themselves. Yeah. You know kids in high school, I know kids in high school who would 
that this is just the greatest mm -hmm. thing that they're going to uh you know become immortal by being the first yeah. to die and you'll have helping. guys out there playing chicken like the three those three guys that locked the one guy out of the manhole cover and he got hit oh <laughs> my god he went to <laughs> jump <laughs> in you, that, that would be an everyday then, occurrence they came oh, yeah. up to laugh and get nailed by the next yeah. oh that was and then their arms and legs are flying down the street out of <laughs> So, Bill, you tell me, this is my memory, and, and you know how sometimes your memory uh, fails you, but what oh. I remember is uh, probably like, wow, probably five to seven years ago, you asked for, on social media, you asked for movies that needed a remake hmm. for a panel you were going to be on. Yeah. And I put in their death rate 2000, and Jerry Chandler right away popped on. Uh, already been done. In fact, Death Race, Death Race 2, Death Race 3. There have been three of them. And I yep. just felt stupid and crap because I thought, now I went and watched those first two. I'd never seen them before. Hmm. Death Race, and Death, the, the one with Jason Statham and then yep. the one after it. And it, it's, you know, it's just it's not, it's the, same. not the same. No. It is. It's not the same. The movie. fun yeah. is gone. You know, yeah. The fun yeah. is gone. Yep. No, if you, try to, if you try to make it serious, no, it makes no sense at all. Um, this, you know, the other thing this reminds me of when I'm watching this, the idea of Frankenstein is doing all this to get his chance to assassinate the president sort of reminded me of some Stephen King stuff, too, that, you know, you can see elements of like the running man mm -hmm. and, a, and a book he wrote that never got made into a movie called The Long Walk. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. So, you know, I, I suspect Stephen King was also a fan of this movie. A lot of people were. It was. It had a, it had more influence than you'd probably give it credit for, and I did have the video game, which was unofficial, but I believe it was called Death Race. They just left out the two thousand, so Roger wouldn't sue them. <laughs> and this was one of those early Atari games, bad graphics, but it didn't matter because all it was was a car that you control with the joystick, and you ran over little stick figures that were running away from you, and they screamed when you ran them over. <laughs> and we thought it was the greatest thing ever, and people were outrage that this was like one of the first times they were like video games are corrupting our youth and what kind of lessons are we sending and i played that game over and over you know how many people i've really hit in real life so far the week is young but you know we did not become a bunch of mass right. murdering lunatics right. because of video games there there were you other know, i i watched tons and tons and tons of Warner brother cartoons i've never shot anybody in the face with a shotgun yeah Just, <laughs> yeah, you know drives, yeah, you know drives people here. crazy politics but you run for office and everyone's like you go girl but yeah that's what drives people crazy not not reading comic books and watching video games but that's mm -hmm. when they come out all the karens come out and oh, start the karens. Well, I, another thing that really hit me was uh you guys mentioned that where the where they drive off they've got all the uh, all the, all the, the geriatrics they called them out on the road and then they mm -hmm. run off on the side and people go flying up in the air um I I didn't hear if you if you mentioned what they called it. What's what's going on up here? Oh, it's geriatric euthanasia day. We do yeah. this every year. I'm like, what the hell? I'm geriatric euthanasia day. It's a celebration. But you get a whole bunch of points. He I think he gave up 700 points, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's what they said. <laughs> He, he didn't think, care. You know, actually, yeah, he had something else planned. The people that's why he's the best be worth more points, shouldn't they? What's people that? that more, shouldn't people that are faster be worth more? It seems to me like uh, younger people should be worth more points because they're harder to hit. I saw this more of a uh, kind of a social <laughs> population control thing that getting rid of the old people gets rid of an okay, okay, expense. Okay. Yeah, we've obviously logic, had an economic but... collapse, and you know, yeah. But yeah, uh, because what they, I forget what they call the French. It, the, the French, French were the bad guys. The yeah. French. So the body count is a whopping thirty-three, which you know movies today respectable. Would, multiply that by 10 at least well that's five minutes of john wick <laughs> but it's pretty respectable <laughs> that's, the that's, the, that's the brief yeah, it's five minutes you know chad <laughs> I, I seem to remember that uh invisible man the original james whale invisible man that it had a body count of like over a hundred because he makes a train crash yeah. full of people yeah he and the train the, crash. The, the censors had told him he needed to take that part out, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, sure," and then never did. Yeah, left the <laughs> yeah. Good for him. Yeah, yeah, I'll get on it right away. Me crazy? <laughs> Even yeah, the moon is a great I, I love the Invisible Man. That's yeah, like, 
way oh, ahead. It's, it's like, oh my God. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but so it seems like, I know this is a low budget film, but it, I, I have the feeling also if the, if they had more money to do this movie, we wouldn't have got the movie that we, no this movie no. at all. It would have been a totally different. Yep. Uh, part film. of the charm is the yeah, low budget. Uh, yeah. Um, I think more money would have let them would have led them to be more serious, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's and what they were forced to make things sort of campy because of they would not have gone for the budget. side. Well, the it's, and this movie needs the camp. As yeah, you know, absolutely. when you look at the remake, you, it misses it. So mm -hmm. uh but what a what a delightful film and everybody watching should check it out let's go ahead and wrap things up for this because we've got some great feedback let's Woo give our uh, recommendation and if you guys want to pick a favorite scene um i'd love to hear it uh let's start off with you chad <laughs> yeah i highly recommend this it, this has always been one of my go-to sci-fi uh movies uh I, I always considered it science fiction because it took place in the future and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, uh, yeah, highly recommend this and and go into it looking not to not take it very seriously, um, and you'll uh, you'll enjoy it. I think. And my my favorite, oh my god, it's so, this is going to be hard picking a favorite scene, but uh, I love uh, the scene where they're chasing the fishermen. <laughs> no, through, yeah, through the water, through the, through the water, <laughs> yeah. and he they let go with the fish. That's what I admire. He yeah, he, he never let go of the fish, but he gets run over, and then they get stuck, and the tires like on his ass, the back tires <laughs> on his ass. So they just decided to just spin out, yeah. and blood just starts <laughs> flying everywhere. I just thought that was the greatest thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. Correct. Not much hyperbole there, but yeah, that's a, that's the funniest <laughs> thing I've seen in my whole life. No. <laughs> Bill, what? there should have been a fart sound there that's yeah, all that's oh my God. well unlike chad i will not lie to you and i'll just say openly my favorite scene was obviously mary warren off getting a massage so, mm, okay yeah. go for it go for it yes yeah. and you i take it you recommend this movie oh absolutely yeah yeah this is this is a fun movie and it's of all the 1970s movies we do this is one of the, this is very 1970s <laughs> yeah. but in a good way some yeah. of them haven't aged well some of them you know time has marched on and and their flaws show but this one was always what it is it's yeah. it was always low budget string you know shoestring apocalyptic science fiction with a killer premise a really funny premise that they you know it promised what it delivered Yep. and and i like that it's, yep. it's, it's I, lo I love that the california mountains are just a couple miles outside of new york city that's the, yeah. Yeah. yeah a fun thing all right jeff you picked this where did we watch this we well i i watched it on tubi i did as well uh it's on some other free services you know with ads and things um i'm was pretty bummed that uh it, it had a Blu-ray in the Corman series from Scream Factory, but it's out of print now. Mm, how um, much is that? Ugh. I don't know. Now it'd probably be like seventy-five hundred bucks, but I, I, you know, it was before I wow went crazy. <laughs> before you went crazy. <laughs> so I never thought about buying it, but it's I would. Before I Jeff would. ordered every single DVD yeah, and Blu-ray yeah. ever made. Oh, by the way, I got my copy of Pigs from Vinegar Syndrome. There That's you go. Of, Oh, nice. Okay. Very good. Anyway, Very good. Um, you know what? Hey, Jeff, these, <laughs> these DVDs might be a better investment than bank stocks at this point. Oh, might be. well, as they're, you know, the fact that the, something that was 20 bucks like three years ago is now like 75 bucks, I guess, if you could find somebody to pay yeah. it. But anyway, yeah, you got to watch this. It's just fun. It's only 80 minutes. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a fun romp. Um, wow. Favorite scene. Um, I'm I'm gonna take uh God, there's so many with Joe and Turbo too, but I, I think I'll take where they uh spear the guy with this. He's got that big blade mounted on the front yes, of his car yes. and they they don't spear him, they just run it right up his crotch. Right in the oh, crack. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. That that's the, that's the way to deal with it. <laughs> oh man, you gotta watch this movie. I I like I said, I had such a blast with this. I'm I'm in love with this movie now, so 
Um, it the cast alone, the the idea of this guy, the lead named Frankenstein, it works perfectly. Um, there's there's some intrigue about who's trying to get who. Oh my god, and the comedy is hilarious. The gore is funny. Uh, you gotta watch it. Um, I God, what kind of I I really like the geriatric one, the where they hit all the nurses and the nurses Ooh. were doing the. What do you say it was? It was like um, Keystone the, Cops or Keystone or, Cops or the I think our gang Bill, or something. What did you yeah, say? Bill, yeah, yeah, Bill said little rascals, some little rascals, rascals, yeah. yeah. Because it was just, just about bodies to... flying up in the air. <laughs> but I loved it. It was so perfect. It was oh my god! It was so hilarious. I was laughing my ass off. That was great. It was. Watch this movie. <laughs> so Jeff, we got some feedback, sir. We do, um, and we may. I've got a long one that I'd like to read, um, and let's save it for last. Okay. No, okay. Let's you do that. forwarded it to me, and we've read it on '80s, and we've read it on uh, oh. classic era, but both times Chad was not there. Oh, so oh. it's it's one it's that must be him. read when he's here. So, um, all right. First feedback uh, on episode 151, The Exorcist Two, from Two Majesties. The heretic of the title is not Father Marin; it's the Father Lamont character. Okay. 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 And I don't disagree. <laughs> uh, and here's one. This is this is awesome. Uh, from 180, the possessed. Who picked that one, Doc? I think you should be able to. You should read this one. Oh, you want me to read it? All right. Yeah. This, this Definitely don't from, want me to read it. This is from Jimmy uh, G UK. Uh, hey guys, thanks for a great episode. I remember this showing up on British TV in the early 80s. I had no recollection of it beyond the spinning nail scene which uh, is a good of a summation as I can give. Yes, that's what I remembered from it as well. Uh, I have uh, been a longtime devotee to your audio podcast, and I've been listening to your cracking output since the still much missed days of the Mighty Santos, and I am slowly porting over to the video versions. But the frequency of the very intrusive ad breaks is a little too much. Well, YouTube. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what did I do? Thank you. Thank you for uh, continually brilliant output, and it was great to finally see you guys. Although for some reason, I did imagine Bill would be more. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys. I told you. <laughs> Not that I am saying he isn't without his charms, uh, but I pictured him as a Clooney of the cast. No longer, lol. <laughs> oh my god, I was not prepared. Who is the, who does he think the Clooney of the cast is now? Uh... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, hey, do you like jazz? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, oh, you got, thanks you for got bringing thumbs up in my book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch the view here, Doc, just so we can. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, let's have uh, the, the next one is on Pigs 183 from Jeff Chapman. Oh, let's see what Jeff thinks about me. Mm. Uh, and and uh, Chad, this was your pick, if you could read that. Okay. <laughs> I watched the one when they found an extra pig, the 13th pig, not to be confused with the 13th warrior. I laughed at that. Sure, it's not a perfect film and made cheap. <laughs> Hell, Charles Bernstein did the score for for uh, oil for an oil, oil painting. painting. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. What's what's with this abbreviation of words and numbers? Uh, I'm having trouble here. He liked he liked in Mark. I'm going to read it just how he's typed it out. Sorry, Jeff, <laughs> but uh, this is how I'm going to do it. He liked in Mark Lawrence's house, but I would choose this over modern CGI family holiday trip horrors they make over and over again today. Mark Lawrence and his daughter was awesome in this. Great work, guys. Got a lot of laughs and found this interesting. LOL. After hearing Abbott. Those alternative versions <laughs> and titles, maybe I will have number two check out some of these other versions. Ha ha. Some of 
you guys expected Night of the Lepus. I was expecting something more like Deranged. Fair enough. <laughs> That's the most interesting read of a thing I've ever read. That was awesome. That's I like that first part, there. though. I was, was getting thrown. Pig, I was not like, to be should, you, should you I? Gotta uh, laugh at you you got to yeah. be able to laugh at yourself, Jeff. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least you didn't say you were no George Clooney. Well. Hey, she fits. Yeah, my cat's okay. Up. Well, no, no, we got we got one for Mikey Z about pigs. You want to oh, there you go. Take sure. that it's no good to remember something that's terrible. This one lingers for some reason. Lingers. Have to admit it, I have not seen or heard of this. Directed by and starring Mark Lawrence, who I remember as a universal contract player from the Abbott and Costello days up to two James Bond films of the 1970s. The plot has a Sweeney Todd Motel Hell meets Brian De Palma's sister vibe about it. Yeah, that's a good. That's a, that is fun. Yeah. Recently saw this as the 13th pig on YouTube after seeing your podcast, and it was a fine print. This version of the film looks like it was sped up a few frames per second. <laughs> yeah. The dialogue and scenes seem like streams of consciousness. They don't seem to correlate to the previous scene or even the previous sentence, almost they as don't. if a lot of this was improv. This must Seemed have been like a it. very clean cutting room floor. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't look like any second takes were done. This plays more like a TV movie than a feature film. And then the first murder, and it becomes something else. The pig sounds are jarring at times. The psyche of Lynn is questionable, to say the least. The scenic non sequiturs can be unsettling. I think Doc would like this one. This, is, this one is one Santos would have loved. I kind of like it, too. A lot does not fit together, but the final recipe is not bad. Don't know who picked this one, but not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, nice. well said, Mikey. Nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Doc. Yes. We got one for Love at First Bite. It uh, just went live today, but somebody. Wow. Already? Already? Come and thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll read it. Uh, Lee Milner. Thank you, Lee Milner. Love the Decades of Horror podcast, even though sometimes the show is much better than the films. Thank you. Uh, I don't know about that, but thank you. Uh, definitely the case with Vampire's Kiss and Love at First Bite. <laughs> the struggle to make it through those two awful movies. Oh, come on! <laughs> uh, all right. I'm with you, Lee. I'm with all you. All right. I'm all, I'm all alone in the love for that movie. Huh? Okay. I can handle that. Okay. So uh, this one is awesome. Doc, you forwarded this to me from uh, Gregory Crosby. Uh, who's who's uh, I'm, I won't give the domain, but his email uh, username is Dr. Gogol. Mm -hmm. um, dear Gru Crew, first, my sincere thanks. I stumbled upon the decades of horror family during the last year of the lockdown amidst my search for a horror movie podcast that didn't inspire me to take an axe to the fiber optic cables of the Internet. Thank you so much. I think that's that. a great compliment. <laughs> that is a great compliment. Thank you. <laughs> I dove into the archives, especially with Doc and Santos, mm -hmm. and I listened to nearly every episode, sometimes after refreshing my memory with a film found via streaming, sometimes not. I pocketed a few episodes until I could see the film under discussion, especially Bay of Blood, which I finally saw mm -hmm. on the big screen this past summer oh, wow. at the Museum of Modern Art's epic oh, cool. two-month-long cool. horror film cool. festival. Oh, wow. Bravo as ever on your discussion of Baba, though I'm still mildly miffed that Bill missed out on the discussion of my all-time favorite Baba, Kill Baby Kill on Classic Era. Yeah. They wanted someone more handsome. We needed someone with more of a Clooney uh, yeah, 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 Clooney, Clooney vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Never Clooney vibe, it and it just didn't work out with <laughs> Bill. Well, I mean, <laughs> Bill, Bill's more a Brad Pitt guy, right? Take that. Pit. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Pit bull. <laughs> uh, during the past two years, during Sorry, the past two me. years, I've often wondered when I would get around to sending some feedback to express my appreciation for the hours of pleasure DOH has given me. Would it be to mount a spirited defense of Messiah of Evil? Mm. Sidebar: <laughs> Yes, it's a hot mess, and yet there's something about those pretentious art house seventies horror films that have a disturbing, truly nightmarish quality, mm. an aura that lingers under the skin long after after more accomplished horror films have faded in my mind. Mm. Messiah definitely fits that particular particular category for me, and I would agree with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would um, too. 
There's yeah. lots of bad movies that have scenes mm-hmm. that just uh, it can't get rid of. Uh, would my first missive be an amusing anecdote about how the only monster that truly scared me as a child was the blob? Because I knew my mother would not allow me to sleep with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's awesome. Funny. And I think Santos used to talk about that too. I think I think the blob was like the creature that scared him the most because oh, it was yeah. unthinking, unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Um, Except anyway, where the blob? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Would my first email simply be an evil spell that, when read aloud by Chad, would turn into a severed hand clutching at his throat? Tagline, he's all choked up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Now, I'll, never, I'll not sleep tonight. Now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, nothing ever felt quite right for my first foray onto contact. <laughs> into contact. Then one recent night, searching for the comfort food of a creature feature, I found an excellent quality upload of the Deadly Spawn on YouTube. Ooh. As I watched the film, a curious thing began to happen. I could hear Bill's voice in the back of my mind describing the practical effects. I could hear Chad signaling out his favorite scene. I could hear Crystal enthusing about the gore. I could hear Jeff describing one of the cast's obscure TV credits. <laughs> wow, this guy really knows us. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and all those are true for that movie, too. He it, listens. It, he really it, does listen. Yes, he does. <laughs> I, I remember talking to Santos one about it. I talked to him about, oh, I listened to that interview you did with so-and-so. And he goes, listen, that, that was a written interview on uh-huh. the website. And I'm like, I read it. I heard his voice. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's true. Just, that's uh, anyway, um, let's see, where was I? In short, I found myself listening to a Decades of Horror podcast that did not yet exist. It seems I cannot watch an old horror movie now without the voices of the Gru crew lurking in the shadows. Not that I'm complaining, mind you, but this is still an uncanny development. <laughs> yeah. Then I thought, aha, here's a reason to write, to request the Deadly Spawn be added to the list of upcoming shows. And then, a week later, you announced the Deadly Spawn was the next episode. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. <laughs> Kudos on that excellent episode. I was especially amused to find out the killing of the heroine wasn't an inspired horror decision but merely an actor's sudden unavailability during the shoot. Uh, You will be pleased and or alarmed to hear that many of the comments made matched up with the ones I heard in my mind. I'm not sure what this means, except that I've likely listened to too many DOH episodes. (laughs) That's incredible. That's possible. Oh, my gosh. Continue the excellent work from the classics to the 70s to the 80s. I know you base your selections on what's streaming, but here are a few suggestions. For classic era... Fiend Without a Face. Stop motion fun. Yeah. Mm. And uh, The Flesh Eaters. Vivid childhood memories of one Ooh. very disturbing scene. Yes. Yes. Scratched uh, on critters. And that <laughs> actually, I think I think Scream Factory just put that out on a Blu-ray last oh, like, fall. Um, for 70s, Bad Ronald, a TV film, also a haunting mm. childhood memory. I remember we've, that. we've talked about that. Yeah, several I remember times. that, yeah. Uh, for 80s, The Hidden. Oh, yes. A, mo- a, yeah. a movie I dug so much I saw it twice in the theater. Wow. Kyle Mc- Every time comes it's to- my turn to pick a movie, I check to see if yeah. certain movies and one of them is The Hidden and it's never been available. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I looked too when we got this and it's like four bucks, I think, mm-hmm. uh, every place. Which isn't a lot of money, but... That's still- worth the four bucks. Yeah. yeah. Cover it's good. Um, great Chuck Russell, I think. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um Hmm. I don't remember if it was Chuck Russell. I thought it was Schroeder, but maybe it's Russell. Oh, it's it, it's Shoulder. Yeah, okay. the guy that did Jack the, Shoulder. Uh, okay. Night of the uh, Creeps. Nightmare? No, Nightmare on Elm Street Two. I think hmm. isn't that Jack Shoulder? No. Nope. Um. Anyway, Alone in the Dark. I think he also did. Uh, but whatever comes down to Pike, I'm sure I'll enjoy everyone's impressions as well. I know this is a long email, so I suggest you wait to read it when you need to fill in time after one of those truly terrible films where there's nothing much to say, like The Ripper or The Halloween 2. The truly terrible films they are only from the 80s. That he's, yeah, uh, wow. I don't know. Well, hang around, Cheer, buddy. The possessed. Cheers, uh, Gregory Crosby. P.S. I identified my favorite Baba above as Kill Baby Kill, but I must confess, that's my favorite Gothic Baba. 
my little black baba heart truly belongs to Planet of the Vampires. Planet of the Vampires. They're all great. Except for you Dr. Saved it. You saved it. And Bill That's, joined That is that a one. great... Well, see, so he, he spent all this time <laughs> thinking about writing this letter. And we've read it now on all the podcasts, right? Yes, yes. For the third time. So, and that's and, I told, and he has since commented, uh, left a comment for a classic era for the the Faust episode. So, oh, oh cool. Okay. Uh, but let's not I, let's not gloss over the fact that he's hearing voices, and <laughs> and what the voices say eventually comes true. Matter of fact, I think we should gloss over it and act like okay. it never happened. And, they, and, and the voices sound like us. <laughs> yeah. It's the last thing I want is my voice in somebody's head in the middle of the night mm. telling them to do mm. weird stuff. Yeah, it's, it's enough yeah. having my own voice in my head. Uh, his his uh, signature lists himself as a poet, freelance writer, and editor. So... Nice. I hope he had fun writing this because we sure had and fun. A man who hears <laughs> now, on the bright side, apparently, I have a very handsome voice. Well, yes, well there, yeah, yeah. You have a great voice for voice. radio. Yeah, I have a great voice great for voice podcasting. Radio. But now we do videos, so oh well. <sighs> Poor guy. Poor guy. Uh, well, you did get to pick <laughs> next week's movie, though, or next episode is two weeks ago. Yeah. And Bill Mullen. Yeah. What, what did you pick? Well, Sir. frankly, this is this is too good for some of our listeners, but um, what? <laughs> I've well, decided what? to go with. Um, it's actually not the greatest, but it is Ray Harryhausen, and even even a lesser Ray Harryhausen is better than most people's best. So, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Now we're taking bets on which movie I will watch. Yeah, right. Uh, on this one, I, You're it, Chad. It, chances are it won't be Sinbad and AI as a tiger. It'll be Sinbad, Sinbad, and if, if you guys ball sack or something. For like people that. who listen to our episodes, when we did uh, the South Voyage of Sinbad, a classic era, Chad watched the Golden Voyage of Sinbad, which we had done on the '70s, but he missed that episode. <laughs> so. So it didn't feel like deja vu, apparently. No. So. so they're talking um, about Cyclops and skeleton fights and dragons. And he's like, what? No, what actually, it was the other way around. <laughs> Chad was talking about yeah, Oculus and a bunch of other stuff. And we're all going. And Ralph's going, uh, uh, um, hey, uh, dude, not the right Ralph's thing. like, no, Chad. And I'm like, <laughs> shut up, Ralph. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I remember seeing that one in the theater. So that's going to be too. Yeah. I'm not thrilled about Patrick Wayne, but that's okay. The rest <sighs> will be good. Yeah. 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 Nepo good. Baby. That's Nepo Baby stuff. from the 70s, right? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Nepo Babies before we knew what. What no. derogatory name to give them? Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I was thinking the same thing. If there's one thing that burns my ass, it's a parent who helps their kid out. Yeah, God, there's yeah, just yeah, too yeah. damn much yeah. of that in the world. Mm. Do we have to find things to be angry about? I mean, do we just have to? Yes. make th There's yes, not enough yeah, in the I world. So. Yeah. Okay. No, don't be happy for anybody. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't you dare be happy for anybody. Yeah. Oh, Speaking wow. of which, we just we just recorded 1984. The BBC live version with Peter Cushing and Donald Pleasant. Back Pleasance. from the 50s? Oh my God. Yeah, we did that last night. Oh, wow. Talk about hard to talk about. I mean, and depressing. And it's, anyway, so yeah, I thought I'd seen all Peter Cushing's movies until that. I, oh, I wow. Never He's knew so he was good. in this. He, he is that was awesome the one that, in this. It's, isn't that the movie that broke him out? I mean, that made him a name? Yes, and, I think and, so. And, yeah. 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 I mean, it's a TV. Movie. It, it was a two-hour live production on the BBC. They had like a a weekly Sunday night movie that was live, and it got so much publicity. And the royal, uh, the, the 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 Duke of Windsor talked about how they he and the Queen had watched it. Oh and wow! So they showed it. They showed it four days later and recorded it. Thank God uh, they didn't oh. record it the first time. So, geez, the balls oh, nice. of that to you know a live. I mean, 1984, a little wordy. Mm -hmm. It's not like, wordy. you know, it's not like you can cover up for getting a line by switching to right. the action scene. That's pretty impressive. It's, yeah. it's pretty impressive. And and uh, the BFI, British Film Institute, just put out a, a Blu-ray version. 
Mm. Last which is fall. on its way to Jeff's house so, right now. It's on its way to my house. Yes. On its way to Jeff's house. No, the one, the one copy they made. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, next week, next episode of Bad Eye Target Catching. Where we, where can we watch it, Jeff? But I digress. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we'll find it. You can I think find it's it. on Tubi. I, I think, think it's on Tubi. I'm sure it's on Tubi. The other That's usually the safe Tubi's bet. It's on Tubi. Tubi. Yeah, so. It's on Tubi or YouTube somewhere. Because I almost it. watched it. <laughs> Back. All right. Well, Jeff, Bill, Chad, thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it sure you. was. Always fun. Yeah. All right. Let's it was. It, it's it was, a, it was a fun one to watch, too. It yeah. was. Well, I'll watch it again. Uh, All right, man. And it is. It is on Tubi and Crackle. 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 All right. Tubi it is. All right. Let's say goodnight. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. G. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Bill Clooney. Good night, everybody. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on just a minute, Doc. Uh... There you go. Adios, amigos. If he runs me over, he gets like 800 points. 800 points to the to Frankenstein. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>